in a large job, or any job for that matter, it's sometimes easier to place the down pipes first. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say we have a reasonable size job, and the code says we should place down pipes as near as possible to valley gutters. That means we have to put down pipes there, so we're stuck with that. These are all valley gutters. The code also says down pipes should be no more than 12 metres apart. Well, normally on a small job, that doesn't apply. It's mainly for industrial sheds, etc. But the code also implies that uh, the formulas they use are for the worst possible case, which is a down pipe at the end and one bend in the gutter. So um, I try to only have one bend per gutter. If you really must have two, um, the other bend should be positioned near the upstream end where there's not much flow going around the corner. So let's see what happens if we um, position down pipes to that criteria. So that gives us all these down pipes. You notice there's only one bend to go around the corner to each of these down pipes. We should also place down pipes in any other spot where, they're, where they may be necessary. For instance, this here is an upper level roof, so obviously it requires down pipes as well. Now the other thing to remember is we have to design the underground pipe work for all this. So that means we need to know the flow from each individual downpipe, which means we have to calculate the area for each individual downpipe. So how do we do that? It's not as hard as it seems. So this gutter here, that'll be the area. Halfway between those two, halfway between those, that's the area. For that gutter there, this will be the catchment area. Now, if we've worked out our available catchment area for each downpipe, let's say uh, our area is 36 square meters. If that distance from there to there was 6, 6 by 6, 36 would give a catchment area of that size. So we can see by eye that every single um, catchment area on this job is going to be less than the required 36. If that was 10 meters from there to there, 5 meters halfway, so 5 by 5 is 25, that'll be a 25 square meter catchment area. And if our allowable catchment area is only 25, we can see that this one, just by eye, is going to be bigger. Therefore, somewhere along the line, we need to put another downpipe to this catchment area. Maybe we stick one in here. We've also got to make sure that where we put downpipes don't come down across windows and doors down below. So, how do we calculate the maximum allowable catchment area for each size downpipe? Well, the answer appears in this um, table here. So now how do we do that? We can enter any area we like in there. It's a huge job. We don't know the roof area. We can't be bothered calculating it anyway. Any figure will do. But we need to put the correct um, slope. We need our location or our intensity, one or the other. Now we can see that this table has now been filled in. We can see, uh, for instance, a 100 diameter downpipe uh, the maximum allowable catchment area is 36 square meters. Now let's see what happens if we make the area bigger. Let's make it four times the size. See what happens. We can see the allowable catchment area per downpipe per 100 has not changed. It is still 36. However, what does change this allowable catchment area is the intensity. So Look what happens if we change the intensity. <laughs> Let's try out a springs, 140. So scrolling down, we can see that now the catchment area is 65, almost double what it was before, because the intensity is almost halved. Now, what if our downpipe size is not on this list? So this is where we use this other program here. We can put in whatever size downpipe we like, and out comes the maximum catchment area for that size. A rectangular downpipe, out comes the maximum catchment area for that size. 
Now, if you want some proof that all these results are in accordance with the code, I would encourage you to check out this video here, how to use the extra features. I would also encourage you to check out the blog site. There are some interesting and thought-provoking um, blogs in this section. So that concludes our series of four videos. I hope you have enjoyed and I hope this increases your knowledge of how it all operates.